So yeah, last time I uh, actually took this part of the leg here, trying to um, separate the pieces, give them a clean um, a clean mesh before applying more um, mid-level details to it and more uh, uh, smaller details as well. So um, yeah, I actually I was working on this piece here, which was the um, the first um, piece of the lot that was uh, pretty much entirely made by hand. And um, uh, before I actually had to leave. So I'll simply continue on that piece here uh, because um, I find that it's uh, like being able to uh, work on some of uh, some meshes only by hand. I find that there's actually a good, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a good thing to practice uh, because you don't always want to rely only on like the, the technical uh, the technical things uh, like uh, creases and topology and that sort of stuff. Uh, so it's good to actually also know how to uh, create a shape and make it um, clean uh, simply by hand. So I'll continue with uh, with this piece uh, here. Actually, I'll fix this line flow here first. I find that. The This actually might be a better line. I'll just fix the line flow a little bit. I think I didn't see that last time, but uh, just trying to have some sort of like, some sign of flow here. The line going there, then going back here. At first I was trying to make it like straight, go do this here, but like this little like tangent here is uh, kind of special. Maybe I can, um, maybe just cut the line a little bit. Hello, hello. Uh, sorry, Nibal, I'm not sure uh, exactly what uh, what you mean. Uh, that my um, the way that I add thickness to models is basically like like I showed how I created like this piece here. I think what I'm going to need to do here 
is making sure that this line and this line here don't interfere too much because what's happening is that is that this line here has uh, is uh, somewhat flat, like made in three segments, and um, on the top here it's it's a it's a curve and they don't really like work really really well together. So um, I think I'm actually going to need to give this one like a little bit more uh, like flatness to it actually. I wonder if uh, I actually make it flat like this, is it going to look odd? I might actually need to fix this line here a bit. You see how like the thickness is not consistent here. I might actually need to maybe play with the synthetic muscle a bit, so it has like somewhat of a a uh, somewhat of a consistent thickness. You see, like now the the way that this line is actually has like three segments, like this kind of like works better with the line just uh just below it, so. I'm pretty happy with that. Um, Annabelle, the only th I, I'm not really sure what you're what you mean, but the only thing I can think of is that if you um, if you mask something like this, just give it like a a good shape. When you actually have this masked this way, you can uh, simply like use like the transposition line to uh, move inside or move, uh, sorry, move outside or move inside your, your mesh. And you can, you can also use a control click to give um, like a different uh, profile to uh, the way that like the shape is going in. Um, as far as I can uh, understand your question, that would be the, uh, the trick that I would actually give you for, for that. And this is what I consider more like of a, a mid-level detail. So it's not really something that I do until uh, later. Like uh, right now what I'm doing is I'm making sure that my shapes are, are clean. Like the, the, the fundamental of my shape is clean. And uh, then I will be applying uh, mid-level and uh, high-level details. And this is when I'm going to uh, do that on, uh, on those uh, models here. I actually never really use the simple smooth brush. I always change it to uh, smooth stronger or even uh, directional uh, smoothing. Uh, directional smoothing, uh, like sometimes it's 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 pretty rare, but uh, it has uh, some pretty uh, useful uh, behaviors. I find, especially when you do uh, when you sculpt hair. 
maybe one day I'll uh, jump on that tool there. All right, so this this one, I'll keep it like this for the moment, but I'll have to match it with this one here afterwards. So uh, I'll simply uh, use the same technique. Uh, am I going to make a, hmm, I could make a real thickness out of this one, but at the same time, it's not really an important mesh. So I don't want to waste too much time with like technicalities and stuff. I think since it's like not really an important mesh, I'll just like keep it like as like a block. Keep it technically simple, actually. So what I'll do is I'll simply uh, close hole. Create like some fake thickness. And uh, actually, uh, wow, that's kind of like a bit dirty, eh? Maybe I should, uh, before creating, creating the fake thickness, I'll just mask the border like this. Oops. Mask by feature border. Invert it. Huh, strange. It actually, it's Okay, it was it's behaving a bit weird. Normally I just choose border and it's fine. Okay, so I'll do this. Then I'll close hole. Take the back, just pull it, create some fake thickness. Subdivide. I'll actually create as a, a cleaner mesh for this mesh here, right off the bat. I'll just go and clone here for a second. And uh, I'll uh, Z remesh, I'll duplicate this up tool, Z remesh this. I'll use my own uh, tools here. So I want her like really low topology. Now. Uh, I use knife curve a bit. It's, um, yeah, it's cool sometimes. I, I find it crashes a bit too much. Like I, before I left for the holidays, uh, I, uh, <laughs> I lost like th three hours of work because I kept skipping the, the quick save. I was relying on the crash save too much. And um, the knife curve made the, the, the software crash and I lost like three hours. It, uh, I was... Uh, that was not a good time. Oops. Come on. So I was I'm just duplicated the mesh. I just did a Z remesh and kind of like reprojected my details on top. There we go. <laughs> I like to know that we can share our pain. Like, I mean, it's it's a new tool. Sometimes stuff like that happens to new tools. Um, it's not going to stop me using it. Sometimes I, I can see really like a, a good utility for doing it. But um, I'm, I'm pretty satisfied with the, um, the way that like the, the clip curve and the clip curve, uh, the, yeah, the clip curve is, uh, is acting and the the slave curve as well. What's really fun about the 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 the, the knife one is that it's uh, symmetrical, unlike the slice curve. So uh, that's a really good thing going for it for sure. Actually, you know what? I'm not even gonna like bother having those two pieces, um, like really having like following the board their borders correctly. I'm just gonna like have one interpenetrating the other like clipping in and I'll create like a false uh, cavity with uh, some uh, some uh, like a cavity tool or whatever.
<laughs> yeah. So what I was talking about the the cavity is a uh, like if you take orb crack, which is pretty good at doing uh like um, hard surface cavities, is that um, you can basically just like use it on the side here, oh, maybe with a bigger radius. Yeah, something like this. Huh? You can create like a, a false cavity. I might actually need to use a lazy mouse because it's not really clean for the moment. Uh, let's uh, try lazy mouse. Oops. That's a bit better. There you go. There you go. And later I'll probably rework the uh, the trim detail around here to make it look a bit more uh, aesthetic. But for the moment, kind of works as a, a base um, base mesh. Let's call it base mesh. So in the front here, it looks good. On the back here, it's a bit weird how it connects with the, the, the joint. So I might need to maybe clip curve it a bit. And since I'm not too sure what I want to do, I'm actually going to save a layer in case I want to um, go back on my, my choice. See, like if I do this and this, it kind of like it's forcing like an intersection for the um, how the the block works with the the joint but here like that little triangle of thickness is not very aesthetic so i'm going to need to work on that um some stuff on my art station is usable in game it's for when i uh, work for a video game company of course but uh, when I work, when I do um, stuff for collectibles, it doesn't matter if it works in game since it's going to be three D printed. And when I do stuff for myself, it's often uh, I'm often not I'm often not making a retopo, and simply uh, just trying to have fun making a uh, like a, just like a simple high res without really bothering with. Uh, the technicalities of uh, in-game and that sort of stuff. I find that my my the most relaxing work for me is uh, to um, to work on more like the design and the polishing of the the mesh 
and quote in other words the high res but uh, beside that I'm I'm not having um, the same fun with uh, with topology I mean sometimes it can be relaxing but uh, it can it, it gets very tedious fast so when I actually do have the time to work on something because I otherwise I'm always busy being like a, a team lead and art director for my company for chaos masons but uh, and when I get like the chance to work on my own things uh, like normally uh, I need I need it to be um, I need it to be something fun not too technical so the high res right now I'm trying to adjust the surface because sometimes when I look at the silhouette it's kind of like caving in right now see it seems fine though I think I fixed it after moving uh, the mesh like this uh, I might need to do an, uh, a small H polish pass you see like right now what I'm doing is like I'm actually using either like the move brush or the clip curve to um, kind of like force the silhouette to be like a certain way and yes it does leave like uh, um, facetization on the surface but nothing that I cannot get rid of with um, with uh, DH polish tool or like the the, the, the smoothing brush. Here it, it's gonna it kind of like destroyed the the corner though, so maybe I'm gonna avoid. Like I could always rebuild it, but it's a bit more of a hassle to rebuild the the corners. So you see H polish, you can just like. Like you, you make strokes in both directions, horizontal and vertical, kind of like to remove the brush strokes. And since I pinched the corner, just give like a smooth brush pass on the corner to just give it somewhat of a um, consistent uh, sharpness. And uh, yeah, so let's stress test this mesh by giving it a metallic uh, material and a darker tone and you see that like there's some places where it's still a little bit wobbly not very like equal so I, I'll just like give it another another pass you see here there's like a depression right here in the shape so I'll try to like I'm looking at the the ray of light not the ray of light sorry the sheen of light I'm just trying to have some consistency, even if it uh, looks facet fast facetized right now. This is why, like, then I just go and give like a little pass of the brush strokes in the other direction, and smoothing at the end will fix the rest. And if you find that it actually maybe made your corners too. Uh, soft you can always just give another like H polish pass on the on the thickness side and it kind of like resharpens your corner so you see like that for me is clean enough and this one I didn't stress test this one with the metallic material but it already looked uh, pretty good to me so uh, I think we're good to go with those pieces there we go maybe give it uh, a little false thickness here. There we go. Let's make it a bit more consistent. There we go. Cool. Awesome. Yep. So let's give it the same the same color. Often I put poly paint to kind of like call out that I'm done with with, with uh, this piece. So uh, yeah. Also something uh, some, like the same way that in design I use like colors to kind of like express like what will be the areas and that sort of stuff. Like I I can already give myself like um a bit of um. kind of like a reminder to have this like piece uh, be um, like have like maybe like a, d a double material on it 
maybe one material will be the outer shell of like green painted metal and um, it can have like an uh, like a thickness area of like more of like the the raw like metal from the inside maybe until like here something like that I'm not sure if having actually this been this the steel metal would actually remove too much of the green material because I don't want to get rid of like green as my uh, my primary color no? <laughs> see I kind of like find it's maybe like too much so maybe here or maybe it wasn't Hmm, what to do? Uh, I think I'll go with it. Don't want to put like too much thought into it as well. It's not a very important uh, area anyway, you know. There we go. So this like gray part here is uh, really just a reminder to, to split the two materials later. And by splitting, I don't, I don't mean actually splitting the mesh. I mean more like uh, splitting in terms of uh, colors and material and uh, maybe the kind of like detailing because I'm not going to put the same details on the outer shells as I'm the, the inside like metal rigs, I'm going to want to uh, use two different uh, uh, visual language to express like what's uh, the inside part and the outer part. Even if like they kind of like share the same level, like it's not like if uh, like this gray part here is really like inside of the model the same way that the joint is, but still I find it, it adds on the character. All right, let's uh, finish this last piece for the leg, and then I'll be able to jump in uh, the mid detail and detail. So for this one here, I will, will I, am I gonna do it with a plane? The, sorry, with a plane with the um, panel loops or just a mesh? And I'm thinking that I'm going to do it just as a mesh the same way that this piece here was made. So once again, selecting the borders, just making sure that like I really have like a, a con like a considerable thickness for my material. Uh, this helps when you want to print the model later also, making sure that like there's no um, making sure it's watertight. Basically, that's what I'm trying to get at. Having uh, the move brush with back face is uh, something that I really love to do because it kind of like creates like a fall thick, um, not a false thickness, that's not what I mean. I just mean that like it's pretty good at like creating thicknesses because it just moves one side of the, the mesh. Okay, so I think I'm going to create the um, 
before creating the actual mesh for this one, I think that like I'm going to keep it in, in the dynamic subdivision for a little while. Because I might need to rework some parts. It's a pretty complex part. So instead of like jumping right off the bat into making making the final like topology for it with Z remesh, I'm just gonna stay in dynamic a bit. But I'm gonna need more resolution than that. Like I think this will be enough. So I'll actually work on cleaning this mesh in dynamic subdivision just for a little while. So here, like I want to put like some spherical detail here and uh, I'm going to do it like clean in one shot. So for the moment, I just want to like create the, the surface of it. And uh, there's a neat little trick I want to show you, something that I use uh, uh, often when I'm in dynamic subdivision, that is uh, I just want to make sure it's actually ready to Uh, well, what I did is, um, I'll just repeat uh, really quickly. Now. So my, my, the way that I actually just uh, pull on the mesh, I'll go back a bit more. So that was the pretty much the state of my, my mesh. And uh, the way that I, I select the rest is uh, in the masking features, you'll have so mask, masking that's here. You'll have a mask by feature here. And if you have borders selected and you click on it, it pretty much masks the border. So when you invert, um, when you invert now, you can actually just move uh, what was the, like the, the border of it basically. So like, this is a way to kind of like pull your mesh and create like a, like a manual uh, thickness, but this is really just temporary actually. Once you actually have this, you can make a close hole. Um, make sure your mesh is not too complex, the shape is not too complex, because sometimes the close hole will not work. And uh, if you're happy with the close hole, you can actually just do like a dyna uh, dyna mesh afterwards and have like your entire mesh uh, cleaner. So yeah, that's pretty much how I did uh, this step here. And um, so yeah, so I'll just continue into like making the uh, the planes, the shape, everything a little bit, a little bit cleaner, and then I'll show you a cool trick. So you see, like this plane here, this uh, oops, this like edge is like going nowhere compared to this. So I have to find a way to kind of like harmonize this like flow here. So maybe if I actually have like this edge moving on the side like this, kind of like rounding here, but now it's not really working. I'll try something else. Maybe what I'll do is I'll actually make the, the line like this edge, like disappear here instead like this. And then I can like with H polish can cut my line here like this. And I really have to make sure that the uh, both plates kind of like share the same uh, same line flow. I'll actually make a drastic cut here. And I'll even use the planar tool using the uh, 
so you see I'm using like the plane here to cut on this mesh so it actually kind of like makes it um, will follow the same uh, I don't really like I don't really like that that's um, No, I don't like it. So maybe the answer will be to actually take this mesh here and kind of like move it so it kind of like, yeah, you see, that was probably the better choice. I'll go back here. <laughs> the master of H polish brush. Uh, I've used that brush, uh, that brush a lot. But that's the whole thing. It's like there's so many tools, and something that's actually like I, I like using the tools manually. And um, sometimes uh, I, well, I mean, I find that like the idea is you you have to find a way to um, to um, understand the, the behavior of the meshes because um like the all the meshes have like a different like behavior depending on like if it's close to the border if it's um like near like a, an empty space if it's near a corner if it's on a flat surface blah 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 and i find that um it's actually the pretty much that's the it's the the whole magic of this software is to be able to have like those manual tools that you can somewhat like predict the effect and create your whole like workflow around. I'm kind of like having a hard time with uh, the planes here. I'm trying to, to do something and it's not really like working well. I'm trying to find like how I can actually have those uh, those change of like planes work. If I smooth this here, this actually might work. It's a bit, um, it's a bit intense how it changes uh, shapes and stuff, but uh, it might work. Plus, I mean, it's like an area that's not super important, so I don't want to like let's call it waste too much time. I remember when I started using ZBrush, I uh, I spent a lot of uh, of time just playing around with the brushes and uh, like not really trying to do anything, just like testing their behavior. At some point, I started to see like kind of like a, a consistency between um, like some tools, and I came to understand like some like basics of like, okay, well, most brush, they react a certain way with their depth, a certain way with like how they handle like change of planes and that sort of stuff. So it like, it just made it that like, pretty much like I started to understand like, um, like the base, the basic like, typical functions of the brushes. That being said, uh, there are some brushes that have like more, but they, they are more useful to me than others. So I, it's not like I'm using a, like so many brushes, like pretty much like all the brushes I use are like the, like eight first year almost. And, uh, those are going to be the brushes I'm going to use like 
90% of the time easily. And the rest are there for like, like doing some funky stuff sometimes. Like for example, I'll show you like, like tr I like to use trim hole, just like punch in holes like this. But the thing is like, you can like, kind of like use it like, if you take like a good angle and you just like drag it, you can create those things and then you can like create that sort of like detail here. So that's pretty much like trim hole. You drag it, at some point you create a hole and you press out for it to come back up and poof, you have like this like cool detail here. I need to do it more cleanly, but that's pretty much the idea. Or if you use a um, trim front, trim front is pretty cool. It actually like flattens everything using the, the camera as like the plane. So you can like do stuff like this, but when you lower the intensity, oh, actually, and add this alpha here, you can create stuff like this. And depending on like how, like where on the plane you start, it'll create like a different like thickness for it. And you can even use out and create like the other side like this. So when it comes to detail, like I'll be using like those things later. Now. Uh, I use nano, nano mesh. I was using micro mesh to do that before, but like now I'm using uh, using nano mesh. It's uh, it's simpler. So I just made sure that the, the the it had like a topology. I calculated the topology correctly so that like the X's are like the size that I want. But yeah, it's it's pretty much just a nano mesh. I have a little X mesh. Okay. So you see, it's kind of like not, it's not really the plane that I want. I'd like this part here to be much more like, like pinched like this, but it's going to create too much thickness compared to this where the synth muscles are. So I actually, I kind of like need to just be at peace with the fact that it's gonna, that like here, the metal is really like distorted. So I, I kind of like, this is kind of like a moment where like I need to just like let it go, I guess. So I'll just start working on this area instead. Right now what I'm doing is I'm looking at like this section here trying to make sure that it's like flat and you see it's not like it's not flat there's like this part here that still is a bit wobbly especially like the inner leg part but yeah sometimes I'll actually try to just take a section and make sure that it's like planar enough and I'll actually almost like fix it by hand with the move brush and then I'll jump in with uh, H polish to finish finish the work because if you're plain, like if a, a section of your model it really just doesn't have like already like the shape that you're looking for, H polish is not gonna magically create like all the the planes correctly. So this is like where the um, the blocking really like is useful. Because if you give the blocking, if you already give the, the the proper shape to the blocking, that's where you can actually just go with H polish and give the final uh, polishing. That's probably going to be enough. All right, so I'll work my way from here to to the top now. This is going to be an easy section because it's pretty linear. Synth muscles are a bit in the way here. Push them back. There we go. Hey, Tiago. <laughs> mm. It's a good trick. When I when I found it, I was like, "All right, cool. I will overuse that 
from now on. <laughs> I say when I found it, but the reality is that I am not even, I don't even remember like if I found it or if I saw it somewhere. It's always a mix of like, a mix of both. So you see here, I'm kind of like missing thickness. And this is where I'm saying that the move brush with back face is pretty awesome. Cause you can just like, kind of like pull, they pull it inside. And after that, you can go with the platter or the polish brush and kind of like give it like the thickness it was missing. And you can see that like here, I use the clip brush to do, to make this picture this section plan R and you can see that like my plane is not really adjusted correctly because of like that tapered line so technically what I want to do is I want to I'll take the move brush I'll kind of like oops remove back face keep accu curve and kind of like force the shape here like that I'm also going to force the line here there we go making sure that the line the thickness here is somewhat constant and I'm using this piece here as like a ref as reference so yeah um now the thing is that this piece here like you see how like this line is kind of like crooked it's just like it doesn't really align correctly with um this gray piece here so i think i'm going to kind of like kind of like move it drastically like this here not drastically but uh i might destroy a bit of my polishing here because i've just noticed that it they don't really like it didn't go really go well inside correctly, so yeah. There we go. So this way, like it kind of like feels like this plate now is a bit more like well aligned with the, the gray part. And this is going to be important that they're kind of like aligned like this because later when I'm going to work on the trim detail around it to kind of like make it look like they're the, well, when I'm going to be adding detail, that's kind of like what I'm trying to say. When I'm going to be adding detail, I'm just going to want to make sure that the they're well aligned together because sometimes when you start adding the detail, this is where you start to see where um, you didn't really respect your the line flow correctly. It's going to be kind of like easier to explain once I'm going to be there. It's a bit abstract for the moment. Thanks, Brandon. All right, that piece is getting soon, getting ready to be called uh, called finished. There's just some weird stuff happening here. It's a bit still unclean. You see like how like this line is kind of like curving. Either I need to insist on the curve that it has by really making it like a feature and not only an error. So the question is, do I want to have it like an intentional line or do I want it to be a flat line? And I think having it 
like a curve line is actually better. So let's clean it as a curved line. Oof, it's kind of like creating a, a huge thickness here for the synth muscle. So I'd, I might need to move the synth muscle afterwards. I think like this. I'll need to fix a bit of the thickness here. So once again, with my move and back, back face mask, there we go. Oops. Remove back face. I'm still having issues with that plane change here. It's kind of like, in terms of like line flow, it works. It's really annoying in terms of a. Uh, in terms of plane change. See, maybe I should insist more on this. But then again, like now you see like oh, this piece, it's kind of like a weird shape. It's not really working. Uh, I, should, I should really smooth the plane here. So it, nah, I think it made it worse. Undo. See, sometimes I get stuck on things like that and I'm just like sometimes I feel I'm wasting like so much time but um, I don't know I kind of like care to find like a, a solution that like works well for me so I'll kind of like buck head with it and this is where I need to work to not like waste too much time sometimes because I can Sometimes I can actually like, uh, like, couple, uh, too many minutes can pass, and I'm just like, oh, okay, well, I lost all that time. Eh? Oh, geez. <laughs> uh, I'm having a bit of a hard time right now, guys. Uh, no, not working either. I might actually need just to commit to 
to that here and stop insisting on this because uh, it's starting to uh, to be a bit too much. I think that might actually work. Eh, you know what? I think I, I think I found it. There you go. That's going to be the plane change. Something like this. There we go. Yeah, okay, we found it. We found it. I'll just try to clean the border a bit here. There we go. All right, we found it. Finally. Jesus. By the way, um, I hope I'm not insulting anyone with uh, all my cursing and stuff. I have a bad, bad, uh, I have a bad mouth. <laughs> Sorry. Maybe I should be more professional. I don't know. As long as I'm not insulting anyone, I guess. I could say like, oh, it's my Twitch, I do whatever I want with it, but at the end of the day, I don't want to alienate people either. All right. Okay. Well, <sighs> cool, 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 cool. I'm pretty much, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Uh, Brendan, I'm, um, I might actually be printing this one. I'm trying to figure out how to print already the, the mosquito and the beetle as well. Um, I'm, so I'm working on that with my manufacturer. Um, if I can actually have all the insectoid printed, I'll be pretty happy. So eh, we'll see. Uh, how I did the uh, the mesh for the, the muscles. Uh, if you look at my first or second video, I actually explain it. Hi, Muslim. <laughs> Some moving the plan change the thing. Ah, uh, sorry, uh, Hoovy buddy, I don't understand what you're saying. I have a hard time visualizing it. Yeah, actually, that's that, that Brendan. That's what was stressing me at first is uh, having to go through like problem problem solving live, like because it, it does happen sometimes. I'm just like, wow, uh, I'm not finding a solution, and I need to like rest on it and come back to it later. And um, like I was always scared that it would make for like a like a bad like stream if I was just like stalling too much and stuff, but. Because if people appreciate it, uh, I can appreciate it as well. Yeah, I guess it makes it more natural. That's good. <laughs> GGB.
Ups. Huh. Well, I really appreciate what you're saying, everyone. It's um, it's really it's really great to read, actually. Like, uh, but it makes it natural that uh, it doesn't bother uh, you that like the flow might be uh, going back and forth and such. Also, um, like, like ah, uh, so I'm going to be like a. Uh, very uh, vulnerable for a second but uh, I actually have a, um, a kind of like a problem that many artists have uh, which is the imposter syndrome uh, I've talked with so many so many of my friends artists and uh, so many of them have this and it's basically like uh, you feel you don't really like you kind of like feel like a fraud um, it's weird to explain I'm not sure I'm going to be able to really like legitimately explain what it is but um like since you all like many artists like even when you reach like a certain level of like uh talent like you kind of like strive to to become better you compare yourself uh, you tell yourself ah, i should be like i should be better at this point i should be doing that and um, even to a point where like sometimes you see like other people's work and you're like ah it hurts <laughs> like, um, like I, I have that like a lot uh, even after so many years of like being a, a 3D artist and uh, doesn't really go away I think or at least uh, I mean I never went to therapy for it so maybe uh, maybe I should go to therapy for that at least I'll be able to uh, work on this. Uh, actually, I, I, I wouldn't mind. I wouldn't mind going uh, on therapy for like stuff like this. I just find that like it never really like stopped me enough to um, to do that. But I would totally um, try to understand like where it comes from and uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but you know, I just like have like this imposter syndrome thing, and it's um, it's kind of like making me doubt about some things sometimes. So that's where it comes from, like the the questions that I'm having about like ah, uh, like if there's like a downtime or if I'm uh, I'm not working fast enough. Well, people like will be uh, like not satisfied of. The expectations that they had for like seeing me work and stuff so yeah it's kind of like the a bit of an explanation for uh, this whole thing I just had the synth muscle here because I kind of like needed extra space here you see, I didn't plan like the netting is actually not going <laughs> going far enough. I need to pull on the the mesh here a little bit. There we go. Like if there was never a problem. Thank uh, Hasali. Uh, at Chaos Masons, we have uh, we have uh, character artists and um, and a character concept artist. We do props also, like some props, but it's uh, it's mostly like characters for video game. Uh, sometimes for movies, a little bit, uh, rarely. Uh, uh, also, sometimes for uh, 
printing and such, but it's really more for video games, actually. Yeah, yeah Sebas, it's a... Uh, it's like I said, so many people have that. It's it sucks, but uh, there's ways to go through it, and often just like trying to rationalize with the fact that it's your head playing tricks and trying to like understand it as like a kind of like a a mind trick that you're making to yourself. Kind of like helps to um, let it be what it is, right? And just like moving forward, accepting that it's. It's like a, it's like a mind trick, right? Like, I find that for me, what works best is just try to not give it too much like power. It's like, okay, it's there. Um, it's going to be there. You have to be at peace that it's maybe always going to be there. But um, yeah, just working on let it be where it is, not giving it too much power, but not de denying it at the same time. You start to live in denial. Uh, bad things can happen to you, so yeah, it's better to not deny it either. Do you have someone? No, no, there's nobody I compete with, <laughs> except like the entire planet. <laughs> No, no, there's nobody I compete with. I have like people I look at their stuff and I, I, I like it, but there's like not one artist that I'm like, oh, every aspect of what he does, like I love it and I want to be like this artist. Um, mostly like I like tidbits of like what this artist does and what this artist does and yeah. Yeah, it's, we really, like, when you really care about what you're doing, and that's where, like, some demons can also, like, come up, it's, um, yeah, it's, a, it's, 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 it's like a syndrome of, like, having a passion, sometimes I find, <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it's, I don't know, you know what, I mean, I'm gonna make a comparison, it's kind of like, like, models, as in, like, uh, people that do modeling, uh, like, uh, like photos and stuff, and uh, taking care of your body and whatever, that sort of stuff. It's like, when you start to go down that route, you can have, like, the nicest, like, body and stuff, and you'll still, like, look at yourself in the mirror and find that you're, like, a piece of shit and that sort of stuff. It's because, like, the moment you start to really, like, give like give yourself to something, and the moment that there's also maybe, like, a comparison factor like uh, the internet, let's say. Um, I think that's where like you can actually start to have those syndromes. So it's, it's like, I wonder if people in like back in the day, if they actually had that, like when they didn't have the internet, like did they have like imposter syndrome? Like were they looking at Leonardo da Vinci and be like, like, oh my God, I am a, I'm an asshole. I'll never be like him. Probably, I guess, in some way, I guess so. I don't know. I have no idea. I am talking out of my ass. <laughs> <laughs> you have to drink when it was cold thing. Well, actually, uh, cheers to you then. <laughs> yeah, I am, um, to be honest, I don't really look a lot at social medias it kind of like makes me like a, a bad audience because i go on social medias almost exclusively to like post my things and then i leave first of all because i just don't have the time to be on social medias with like having a family having the company having my own personal projects but also um just in general i feel that it it it, it, it brings me a bit more negative things and positive things, to be honest. Like, I go on Art Station, like, for two reasons. One, when I post things, and, like, I, I'll spend some time looking at, like, what's what's new. Or when I'm looking for, like, to hire, like, a new artist. 
otherwise yeah I don't go uh, don't go there often yeah I think uh, any um any uh, domain where you can compare yourself to other people, you're going to have this imposter syndrome being something uh, really uh, um, alive in people. And like, I'm I'm pretty certain that like, even the tops of the tops, like have this problem also. Because like I've spoken to so many like of my friends that are like that are uh, very like well known uh, figures in their domain, and that they always had it. Like most of them had it. Some people don't, but uh, I think it's a it's a very. Uh, Okay, we're getting pretty close to the end for that piece. That was a super hard piece to, to model. But uh, we got it. We got it. Well, close. I'll start working with a layer just because um, I'm kind of like starting to feel uh, a bit um, not too cert like um, like protective about this piece and if I make like an error like I'll start to really hate myself because of how much time I actually spent on cleaning this for the moment so I'll just put like a layer in in case uh, I fuck up well at least I'll have the layer to to help just trying to work on that curve here If I look for inspiration on Behance, uh, not not really, to be honest. Um, I find that like ArtStation pretty much gives me everything that I need, and um, uh, Pinterest actually. It's weird, but like sometimes I fall on like pretty artistic stuff or like um, libraries of interesting things on Pinterest. So I'd say that it's pretty much like ArtStation, Pinterest, or just life by itself. Like I remember there was a time I was watching a lot of. Uh, of um discovery channel well not discovery channel but like planet earth like narrated by uh, david Attenborough, and i was really inspiring myself with uh stuff that i saw from nature sometimes i know oh yeah also video games like uh i recently i played uh, guardians of the galaxy and uh i was i felt really inspired by uh, some stuff in it uh, funny enough, I almost worked on Guardian of the Galaxy, uh, but I I uh, left uh, Ados a bit too soon. That would have been a cool game to work on, I'm sure. It's really it's it's always fun to see the games that your your friends worked on. That's for sure, especially when it's a really great looking game like this. Yeah, <laughs> Bernini. Poor guy. <laughs> Man, Bernini did some crazy stuff. All right, cool. Well, there you go. That that fixed it. Yeah, before, after, before, after, much better. There you go. I guess we can call this one officially done. I can try to do like my little trick now. I was teasing about a few hours ago. I'm not even sure if it's gonna actually like work well, to be honest. But technically, what I wanted to do is like to show you like you know like here, um, this section here. Like, sometimes what I'll do 
is I'll actually make, um, well, I'll just show it. I'm not even sure if it's going to work, but let's try. I'll create a new subtool. So if you use a uh, clip center, and if you start to like a, a circle in the middle of your shape, not outside like this, because outside it's going to chop it off like this, right? But if you like use it inside without, it creates like those like cylinder thing like this. And sometimes I actually like really like the effect that it does. So you see like this, it kind of like creates some like some cool effects. Uh, sometimes you have to fight, uh, find the right angle for doing so. And it creates kind of like an extrusion where you can place a bolt in there after. Uh, I really like doing that because uh, if you just take trim hole, trim hole, like you can do like the trim here, but you can do like the like the this the this part here. So that little like clip trick, uh, I I like to use it sometimes. But you really have to like find where you want to use it. Oops, that was outside of the shape. See, like sometimes like, like if like some junction, they don't work well, sometimes I'll just like use, like I'll just place like a big detail right here to kind of like break the junction. All right, have a good one, Alex. See, it's kind of like not really aligned here, so uh, I'm not sure how much I'm going to to use to replace this detail here. Yeah, I think I'll uh, I'll use it. Ooh. Not working well. See, like this one here, I, since it's not like really using the, the silhouette, I could have just used like trim hole. Oops, that's not, I think I need to use a smaller alpha thing. Yeah, there we go. See, so later I can like start placing details like this, but uh, yeah. But you know what, for this piece here, like I, I, I don't think like I've, really need to to place this one here. Yeah. I think it's going to be fine without it. That was a nice detail. But uh I kind of like gave it like a shape that works as well, just like this. All right. Let's call it done. Well, maybe I'll work on it later again. So let's officialize this piece by making it a Z remeshed piece, not keeping it a dynamesh. It's just going to make working with it easier later. And uh, I will I will do that. Number one, I'll just clean a little bit the inside like this because it doesn't take too much time. 
goes like this. All right. And then I'll Z remesh and reproject it. So cloning it, duplicating it. I'll actually dynamesh it to a lower level. So the Z remesh takes a bit less time. I'm going to Z remesh at a thousand polys. I'll just take the mesh it's giving me. And I'll reproject. Projection shell, projection distance. I'll try to get the approximate same amount of polygon. So you see it's 10,000 and this one is 175,000. Okay, that's a much more, but anyway, I'll need to. I'll need to subdivide at some point. There we go. And I'll insert the piece here. So you see like those are DynaMesh. And this is my final mesh. All right, so now we have pretty much the entire thigh completed. So like now I would be ready to go into uh, the same kind of like detailing that I did for here. Can start doing it now for uh, this section here. So I'll save. All right, see you, Brandon. Uh, thanks, Kimba. That's a uh, that's a very nice comment. Have a good evening, Fire Foofy. Uh, it might it might actually be too late. I just saw a line that I do not like. This one here. Oops. There we go. Okay. I'll save it again. I'll repurpose this alpha right here. Duplicate.
the highest number uh oh, it really depends on uh like the scale of the object and uh so much so many factors actually the, the software kind of like caps the dynamesh at i think four million polys maybe now eight million polys so like there's like a hard limit anyway technically before i even have like a like a limit myself hey gravity be you last Gravity bow list. Bow last. All right. So since I'm going to start the um, some of the uh, detailing now, um, something that I find that will be helpful is well. First of all, I'm using uh, like. I'm using uh, these um, references of the other insectoids just to like act as a reminder for like how I treat like the edges and those those sort of details. Uh, I'm not really using any other reference because I'm just pretty much like using old tricks that I use all the time. So I don't really feel like I need to like study anything. Um, so uh, yeah, uh, I'll just be using that and since I want to kind of like reuse the same alphas, I'll kind of like, or alphas are like details, let's say, I'll just make like a, a print screen inside of ZBrush like this of, um, of the foot. And I'll go ahead and load like a couple of alphas that I use. Uh, often. Uh, sometimes I actually save my alphas in the folder I'm working on. This time I didn't do it, so I'll just use my, my library of alphas here that I always use. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, Truban, I do not understand your question. It's a bit hard to visualize. I don't know if there's another way to explain it. I'll just use a I'll just load a couple of alphas. I think that'll be enough. All right, so um, yeah, let's start working on those. So you see, like I, I'm, I'm not even like um, placing the symmetry yet. Well, you know what? At that point, since I'm placing, I'm gonna create uh, details and mid details to my objects. I might start to use like to, to heavily rely on um, on um, um, layers to make comparison and tests. So by that point, since I'm going to start using layers and that sort of stuff, maybe I start. I should actually have um, both sides of my model in a high res. So um, I think I'm going to start by doing that. So. 
for like objects that don't have subdivision levels, it's pretty easy. Just mirror, mirror and weld, activate symmetry. I only mirror because I'm on the opposite side of the mirror algorithm. But like for objects that have actually like subdivision levels, I'll just need to to destroy the subdivision level quickly. Uh, mirror, mirror and weld, and oops, reproject, uh, reconstruct subdivision. There you go. Oh, this is still a dynamesh. I never is it remeshed this part actually. Well, let's do it quickly. Uh, duplicate. Dynamesh to a lower sub level of subdivision. Maybe I should clean this here. Just a bit. There you go. Clean enough. Um, does it remesh at 500 polys? If possible. Okay. <laughs> Salut Antoine. It's uh it's funny because there's some there's like people here <laughs> that I'm sure that I know, but because they're just nicknames, I'm just like, oh hi you. I kind of like had an idea that like Fire Fifu was Medzi though. So uh yeah. Now you've been unmasked. All right, a nice freshly Z remeshed piece. Insert, there you go. And now delete subdivision, mirror, mirror and weld, reconstruct subdivision, and activate symmetry. I can now delete the old piece. Same for this one. Um, all right, is that it? There you go, that's it. At this point I can also um, get rid of this portion of the blocking here that I don't need anymore. So I'll just, uh, since it's a, it's a consistent mesh, I'll simply mask it. Uh, maybe I should put it in a layer. Yeah, I'll put it in the same layer as this. mask it like this and uh, I'll just mirror and well no sorry smart symmetry start with the lowest level then go higher and at this point here uh, yeah whatever smart symmetry Kevin, 3D art. Who's that? <laughs> he would have gotten away with it if it wasn't for those meddling kids. <laughs> uh, that's funny.
Yeah, there we go. Both sides symmetrical, all clean, awesome. Okay, okay. So there we go. Let's start with this piece here. So I'll add a mesh, a mesh a layer, save. I'll start a new save here. Um, separate and polish. Let's call it uh, like details. Since we're like entering like a new uh, stage, it's weird because I kind of like feel like my brain needs to reset a bit because it's been doing like the same thing over and over and now I'm doing something else. So like my brain needs to readjust. And, uh... Uh, we don't have mentorship. We, uh, we have some like tutorials and we're doing this, but... Uh... No, we don't have, uh, unfortunately, we don't have time for, for mentorship. I mean, when you work with us, we do teach you for sure. And because everybody working for us has to be able to provide the Chaos Masons quality assurance. Um, so like anybody that like starts with us, like needs to be ramp up to, to, to speed with uh, our a benchmark of quality, but otherwise, no, we don't really offer uh, mentorships and that sort of stuff. So, uh, I'll start with. Um, like probably what I what I want to do here with this piece since I already separated with like colors, is uh, oh they're not super clean now I realize it could be just a little bit cleaner. Oops, wrong color. Hey, Sushan. All right, so it's a little bit cleaner. I'll create a layer. Uh, what I want to do is I want to mask uh, the gray part because I might want to just like push it maybe, have a, maybe push it in, push it out, we'll see. Um, so I want to use mask by intensity, but for some reason it doesn't really work when my layer is in recording mode. So I need to deactivate recording mode and then I can reactivate it. And now it's, um, it's masked. Invert the mask and I want to temporarily hide the mask. So the mask is still existing, but it's hidden. And I'll actually like test giving it some uh, depth or some thickness like this. Uh, you see now there's like a little bit of a problem here. Uh, this can be solved by um, at the stage where you have your mask, just sharpen it, then blur and sharpen again. So uh, masking, you have blur mask, sharpen mask. This will help with uh, those kind of like problems. There you go. So does it look good when I actually extract it like an extrusion like this? Or is it better if I push it in like this? I think the answer is that it looks better when I push it in. 
but you see what I'm using here is a transpose line move transpose line and I'm right clicking on the extremity and it does inflate but for the borders it kind of like destroys it so if that happens I'll simply um, do it manually so what I can do is I can just like take the gizmo here put it a little bit inside maybe maybe do like a scale instead so put it in scale mode I'll have to exit act, activate local symmetry for this there we go and I can create the, the thickness now. Maybe pull it a little bit out so it kind of like tapers or bevels the thickness. And by hand, I will fix where it, it's not really going the way that I want it to. to. So yeah, I think that that'll be that'll be good. <laughs> All right. I'll just take a second here. Okay. So now that I have this, I'll actually like um, keep this um, thickness thing on its own layer. I'll go on another layer and I'll start adding other details like using orb crack oops my mask was uh, still active and I'll simply create a cavity between the two materials just to really insist on the fact that it's two separated objects. Maybe that this is a bit too thick for a cavity. Maybe I just want it to be a little bit more subtle. Like this. There we go. Lazy mouse is your friend in situations like this. So here, here if I add the a thickness, it starts to be pretty thin on this side here. Um, not enough to be a problem though, but what I could have also done is kind of like have the cavity go in that direction here. And here, make the cavity like even thinner all right so for this part here what I'll do is uh, I'll do like an a mask a mask extrusion because it's kind of like an odd shape um, I kind of feel like I can actually pull out having like this kind of like detail. I'm now realizing that maybe I don't have enough resolution on this mesh to really uh, do some good detailing. I'll actually collapse those two layers together and I'll subdivide 
oops, deactivate the layer. It's not going to let me subdivide because I have a layer. Now the question is, do I want to commit to this? So I subdivide. Like there's other like workarounds, but I think it's safe enough to um, to actually just collapse this layer. Oh no, it's not subdividing because it still thinks I'm masked. Yeah, there you go. Now I was able to subdivide to seven even with a layer. So uh, there you go. Screw you. <laughs> I win. All right. So now that it's uh, subdivided here like this, I created a new layer. And I will be adding this mask thing I was talking about. I will actually add a lazy mouse to my to my mask. There we go. Let's do it clean. There we go. Clean enough. There you go. One little line inside like this. Maybe too thick. Perfect. Like a glove. There you go. And uh, for the rest of the the details here, I'll actually use this alpha, but inverted. So like this alpha is like this shape here. It's a pretty cool one. And if you use it without alt, it kind of like goes up like this. And I want to, I kind of like want something that kind of like tries to reconnect with the shape here. But I want to be masked because I don't want to influence the green part so I will turn off my layer once again mask by intensity sharpen blur sharpen go back in recording mode invert hide my mask and I will even add a little back face mask here we go There you go. Now I'll add some more cavity lines in here. Kind of like, see I'm kind of like trying to get like this thing happening here. I don't know. <laughs> the classic square alpha. Yeah, yeah, there's a... Uh, yeah, I like that one. It serves me well. So something... I will actually add a detail on the green part. Um, and it, it's simply like the standard brush with some lazy mouse. Oops but in uh, Ziad without color with some lazy mouse, a bit more strength, a bit more lazy mouse. And uh, like, I'll use like this to kind of like create lines like this. Uh, but it's also like to kind of like offset my lines because you see I, I'm using it in the like inside part here. 
We should maybe use a head like this. So you see like it's kind of like creating like a like an inset and I'll use so you see how I treat like this is what I call trim trim detail. It's basically like treating uh, the connection between two pieces together. I'm kind of like adding details there kind of like to mimic that they like connect together. Um, by connect, I really mean like, uh, like, um, connect. Uh, what's the word in French? It's a, uh, I, I don't even remember in French. What's the word? Incarné? No. Damn, I don't remember. <laughs> Just like making sure that like it kind of fits like that. Like one is going inside the other, like it grips in with like a detail. That's pretty much like the only thing I'm trying to do. And like I'll, I'll repeat that pretty much all over like the pieces that are similar. Dock in, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's call it that. It's it's that's a good way of uh, of uh, of saying it. Un briquet. Uh, why? 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 It's. Like you, you, I think you, you get the idea of it. <laughs> Not sure I like this here. What if I actually Ah, you see, that was a cool detail like this, but like the way it's actually kind of like on the same line as this kind of creates a weird tangent that I don't really like. So I think I'm going to stop insisting on the, the cavity thing for the moment, and I'll simply place like some like long line alpha. I think it's going to work better. Yeah, you know what? It's gonna be good enough. And now for the surface here, um, I'm actually going to go and create a new layer. So what I'm gonna do is, um, it's kind of like a tight spot to work because it's on the inside here. So that might actually be a little bit difficult to work on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove part of the object for the moment. It's even uh, kind of like in the way even for here. So what I'll do is I'll actually clone my object, clone the there you go. I'll hi even hide this one here. And uh, I'll simply like um, recreate my detail later um, uh, with uh, with the smart symmetry. For the moment, I just want to create like kind of like a like a docking in of this material inside of this one. And I'm using brush trim hole, which does like those kind of like details here. I will also save. So that's a little trick here in document zap link. You have like eight sockets here that are called front, back, right, left, blah, 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 whatever. I actually, I put them here for me and I'll click on custom one. I could have clicked on any of them, but like it kind of like just records the angle of the camera. So if I move my object and if I, I want to go back exactly where I was, I can click on the same button and it goes back here. So what I'll do, I'll test to see how it looks. And if I like if I like it or if I don't like it, I can just go back on how it looked here. But you see, I think it like this. This should be fine. It just it's just missing uh the going in part.
Yeah, it's subtle, but uh, oops, that's cool. I'll see if maybe uh, a little bit more harsh or intense is better. That's good. I might need to move the the cylinder though to kind of like realign it because it's not really well aligned. Let's do it. All right. That's good. I can make the other side appear and to get the detail back, I'll just mask the part that's fine and smart symmetry my detail on the other side. So this way I was able to work on those pieces without them being like in the way of each other. So I'll go back in my oh, that was the old one, delete. So that was a long way to go, but um, it actually helped me to make this detail clean without having to find like the proper angle. And since it was like something that was a bit hard to calculate, like I, I liked to take the, the my time to do it well. So yeah, so now the only thing that's left is the rest of the of the detailing on that plate. It's 11 right now. Normally I stop after two hours. I'll try to just like finish this like part here um, before leaving. So the rest is like, the rest can be really abstract to explain, but it's just like using like tricks that I've always found that actually like works well in terms of like visual language for plates and, and that sort of stuff. I like those like bumpy line like this. I like those, um, those straight lines also they're cool I uh, will be using uh, stuff like uh, the good old classic rectangle and on the other side I can do like the opposite uh, in and out so like it feels like those two pieces are like connecting like this um, this is uh, something I use really often But I'll I'll try to make sure I kind of like reuse the same details as like this piece here, and the details that you can see here are like this dot thing, this line going in, this line going out, this little bump here, and the good old kind of like trim line like this. Kind of a cool place for it so uh maybe i'll keep it i'll see if i can place one here also i'm gonna let it save by itself yeah yeah i like this uh, little detail i try to also like make sure to keep like the same um same scale for my details. And by the way, like at any time that I'm not happy with like 
a, a detail that I ha added, I can simply like store morph target um, the state of my mesh before the layer, like when the layer is offline. And I can simply like use the uh, morph brush and kind of like erase the details by hand where I don't like it. You can even uh, like e erase parts of it. And you see like that's kind, of, that's kind of like a cool detail here if I just like remove like part of that that circle here like this I'll just need to add some like cavity to kind of like There we go, cool detail. So like that might be too much, but I can also like add like a really that's like a mid detail. It would it would be to take like this mask here and kind of like create an extrusion. That could be something like I could do this. Um, sometimes when adding details like this, it like kind of like becomes maybe a bit overkill in terms of like shape change and that sort of stuff. But let's 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 try it. I just want to find a good uh, line flow for it. Good shape. Uh, Like it's weird to explain, but right now my brain is pretty much my brain is pretty much looking at all the lines everywhere and trying to make like parallels and averages. Let's try this, but like the corners might be a bit too sharp, so I'm gonna I'm going to blur, sharpen, blur, sharpen, blur, sharpen a couple of times to really round those corners. And then um, if I do an extrusion, it'll be like a pretty harsh extrusion like this. I can always like kind of like move it to create some like tapering and stuff. Or something that I can also do is I can control click inside of the mask to kind of like blur it in one direction only. And when I inflate it, it kind of like has this like rounded and then sharp edge here. Which gives, which gives like kind of like a bit of a softer look to the extrusion, but I like it. Now the idea is like, does it work? Like, is it really like adding something? I feel like on this piece, it would need to kind of like have like a bit of an extrusion as well to kind of like make sense because now it's a bit like alone by itself. Maybe the extrusion needed to be going inwards instead. So let's try pushing it in like this. Let me doing that mask thing again. Oops. Oh, I had a visual bug here. For some reason, I feel it like if it's going inward, it kind of like works a bit better. I'm not sure if that detail is really necessary, but we'll see when I'll be doing the details on the, the part right above. That'll help to visualize it. So um, I think I'm going to be adding maybe some small like bolts detail. Uh, I'm not sure how big I should be making them, so I'm just going to make one quickly here. Try to get like the same size I think it's 20. Yeah. No. 24. There we go. All right. So now that I have the right size, if I was to work on this this character uh, like all day, I would probably remember the values of my details. Hmm. I kind of feel like this detail here 
would work a bit better. Did I ever use this detail? Yeah, it's here. Yeah. 80 is the good sign, the good size. Maybe less deep. It's kind of like similar to that detail here. I think I'll err on the less detail. You know what, I think that I'm, yeah, I think I need to slack, um, slack on the details a little bit on for the uh, the surface here. And this detail here might be a little bit like too, um, too much actually. And I think I might need to make it breathe a little bit more like this. Which means I'll even Get rid of this. Oh, you know what? No, fuck it. I'll keep it there. I'll place. All right. Not too much. All right. I'll only add details in the intersection here. And that'll probably be all for this one here. I'll probably also need to add some details on the gray part here to kind of like give it like some connected feeling to here. I'll do that later. Like the same with it, like you see, I have like those, like this round shape here. That'll probably make me try to do like those kind of like, like details like this. And then uh, like, if I add like some cylinder here, it'll work well with this uh, hole right here. So that's probably what I'll do with this piece when I'll I'll get to there. Now. Just always trying to find a way to make the pieces really like connect together. Um, so I gave it, I, I, I spent a lot of time trying to connect the pieces um, by having like their line flow follow correctly. Like when you saw me kind of like make the shapes around here and I'll, I'll double down with like when adding the detail, trying to make sure that they really truly uh, follow each other correctly. So once again, I'll just mask. <laughs> Still doing that thing here. I need to reduce the size of my mask, mask, blur, 
inside, sharpen, blur inside again, sharpen, smooth, sharpen. There we go, it's kind of like helping. So if I add like a detail, like here after, I'm kind of like simulating like some like connection between those pieces. So that's basically what I'm working on. Uh, normally I work on all the details on all plates at the same time, but I was really just trying to finish like one piece before leaving for the night. So, uh, yeah, next time I'll be working on like all the details. Yeah, that kind of worked. Here that was really just to, to fix the clipping with the, the joint piece here. Uh, yeah, I think I'm going to be calling it for tonight. Kind of like gives you an idea of uh, how it's going to look later. All right, yep. So I'm going to keep those two layers separate. Maybe at some point I'll, uh, I'll merge them. I'll get rid of my store morph target, trying to keep it low resolution enough. Reactivate my layers. Boop, boop, there we go. So it's a slowly, uh, slowly taking shape. Yeah, I kind of like decided to keep this character um, for um, for the stream. So it's kind of like uh, going to advance a bit slow because I'm going to be working on it only on the stream. Maybe at some point, I, I think I might actually advance on some part of the character. Like that might actually get maybe a bit rep uh, repetitive. So I can maybe like, we'll see. But I mean, I'm working on something else at the moment. So it's not like if I have, uh, I don't have anything to do either. So, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, 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 yeah. Let's uh, save this character. And let's go play a little bit of GT, GTA 5 if we're going to bed. Woo. Party. No problem.
Well, I'm always happy to see that people are learning, so that's why I'm doing it. No problem, Tiago. That's uh, my pleasure. <laughs> no problem, Medzi. Et Miguel. So, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Let's call it... Let's call it done. And uh, I will... Um, I will try to make it uh, recurrent on uh, every Wednesday night. It's kind of... It feels like it's the night of the the week that I'm not uh, really doing um, doing much so it, it feels like I can pretty much commit to like making it every uh, Wednesday if it changes I'll try to let people know in advance and um, yeah I mean especially now that like in Montreal the the laws for COVID they actually got a little bit more strict lately so it's not like if I really have like somewhere to go at night <laughs> Plus with the kid and everything, so I think I'll be able to kind of like keep a um, a good rhythm like this. So uh, yeah, yep. Yeah. No problem, Hannibal. Well, I'm happy to know that I actually I answered your question because I wasn't really truly certain what you actually uh, needed to know. I kind of felt like I was going to go through it at some point through the, the the process that you're looking for but like i'm happy that you can confirm that your question was answered so perfect awesome 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 um well that's great uh i think i'm simply gonna call it a night so uh thanks everyone for for coming in i really appreciate uh working like this knowing that there's some people working with me at the same time being able to answer questions in advance on my own personal stuff so uh yep it was a great thing so i'll say uh cheers everyone cheers jacob uh and uh i'll see you relatively soon uh, I still don't have a catchphrase, so uh, I was going to do the Markiplier catchphrase. Bye bye. Uh, I won't do that. I don't copy people. I promise at some point I'll find a good catchphrase. So uh, I don't know, man. All right. I'll see you soon. Ciao. <laughs>